I'm here now to talk about balancing credit and debt from Michigan State University Extension is Erica Toby. Erica is the former program leader for MSU Extension's statewide financial education program and has worked as a national liaison to credit unions. She has also been the national contact for youth financial literacy. All right, Mark and Erica, take it away. Well, good morning, and how are you? I'm doing great. How are you? Great. Erica, my first question for you is we hear about credit, we use credit, some people take too much credit. But what is credit? Well, credit simply is the process where we can purchase goods and services and pay for those things at a later date. And often we think about credit as things like, it can be simple as our auto loan, our car loans that we get, or if you're going to purchase a house, a mortgage that you have, or it can even be things for like education, like student loans, or as simply as credit cards. All right, so why do I need credit and why should I be using credit? Well, credit is really, really important, and actually it has a lot of really good advantages. Uh, for one, we, it's convenient. It's for ease of use. We can simply swipe a card a lot of times and be able to not have cash in our pocket, but able to use it. Um, it's also really good to have things to be able to purchase a house. A, not, a, lot, of not, a lot of people don't always have $150,000 cash sitting aside, but they can get a mortgage and be able to get a loan. Great point. Great which point. is really, really nice. So we have the availability of credit. Mm -hmm. There is a proclivity in some of us to maybe use a little bit too much credit, right. and we can get into trouble with that. So I'm sure it's a fair question to ask, what's too much debt or too much credit? That is a great question. And actually, one of the things that we use is a financial ratio. And a lot of times, those are really good to kind of help us see where our financial picture is. And one of the first things that we can look at is a debt to income ratio. And essentially what that is, is looking at your monthly outstanding debt payments divided by your monthly net income or your take home pay and really seeing where that falls. And a lot of times the lower the ratio, the better. So if you have less than 10%, that is really kind of a good ratio to have. If it's 10 to 20, you're still doing okay. 20 to 35%, you're starting to get in a little bit of a questionable area as far as if you can repay some of those debt payments. And then anything over 35% is really something that we almost need to be concerned about. So if we're using credit and debt, often we're going to the bank. In those ratios that you just used, mm -hmm. what's the bank looking at? Well, they're really looking uh, at if you can make those debt payments. I mean, if you're able to make and, and pay off those debt obligations that you have. So that ratio might be, what, 30, 35 that they're looking at? I mean, they're really, I would say anything over 15 to 20 percent is really something that you really need to start to be concerned about. Interesting. Seems we need to work down our debt, most yeah. of us. All right, so what is a credit report because this is very important when we talk about debt and income and all of our ratios and our history that shows up on that credit report doesn't it yes and actually a credit report is just simply your report card for your financial health so if you even just kind of take it back to school terms it really gives you kind of a picture of what your financial situation is and especially lists all of the the credit and loans that you have out there against your name well, most of us are wondering, what do you have on me? What's in that credit report? <laughs> yeah, and there's really four key questions and four key areas that we look at. Uh, one, we have identifying information, and that really gives your name, it gives your address and any former addresses that you have. It gives your employer or previous employers that you had. So really kind of showing that work history. And that section is really, really important because sometimes there's individuals that may be a John Senior and then their son is a John Junior. And we want to make sure that the credit that's tied to those individuals is actually accurate. And sometimes that can get mixed up. Then there's also things like trade lines. And this is uh, your credit accounts. It's all of your mm -hmm. financial information uh, that really shows how much you have in particular accounts. It talks about if you're making your uh, payments on time, what your balance is in, uh, are on some of your accounts. So it really kind of gives you a complete picture of your financial situation. Then there's things like credit inquiries. And credit inquiries are essentially people who have accessed your credit. Uh, and it may be people that you're aware of. Um, it might be people like uh, if you're looking for a job, going to an employer, they may look at your credit. It could be somebody that you may be renting from, they may look at your credit. Or it could be somebody who's interested in lending you money, either who you have sought out or is just simply looking at your information. And then finally, the last area is really public records and collections. And this really looks at if you've had any public bankruptcies, uh, if you've had any judgments against you, if you've gone into collections. This would really kind of show and, and let a lender know what are some of the concerns that are out there against you. 
Okay, so there's a lot of information, mm -hmm. four categories of that. Right. How do we use that in a practical matter? Well, it's really good information uh, for you to be able to kind of check your credit report and make sure it's accurate. You want to be aware that you are aware of what's actually on the report because if you were to go into a lender and try to uh, get a loan from an individual, you want to make sure that you are aware of anything that they're going to be seeing. Now, identity theft uh, with the previous speaker is a real concern, and so you want to make sure that any derogatory information that's on there is accurate to your belief. Okay, so there's information. My employer might look at it. If I'm renting, they might look at it. If I'm applying for insurance, exactly. they might look at that. Exactly. And look at that as the way Mark's going to take care of his family. Exactly. I have a poor credit, and he's going to get the large life insurance policy. Exactly. So it's a real risk management approach for employers and other types of uh, situations by looking at how I handle money. might give me an idea how I handle my life. Exactly. Okay. So we should be looking at our credit report regularly as we do with identity theft just to keep on top of that. How do we do this? Where do we get a copy? Well, one of the best places that you can go is www.annualcreditreport.com. And this is one of the, the wonderful free opportunities that you can actually access your credit report. And like the previous speaker said, really one time per year um, that you can do this per each of the different credit bureaus. So you can get one from Experian, Equifax, and TransUnion each year to be able to see what's on those reports. Okay. Credit report, we hear a lot about credit score. Yeah. What's a credit score? A credit score is simply a financial calculation that's computed by lenders to be able to see what your financial situation is. And it's really a range of scores, and it can go anywhere from 300, which is a pretty low score, all the way up to 850, which would be an excellent score. And essentially, these are really, really important because a lot of times, interest rates that you're charged on different loans are really set by that. Um, and it, it really is just important to know, kind of understand what that credit score is. Do we have good ranges in terms of what might constitute a good credit score? And then more importantly than that, depending on what our credit score is, how does that affect our ability to borrow or our access to very favorable borrowing? Exactly. So the better the credit score, the better the interest rate that you're going to get. Uh, meaning anything really uh, about 720 and above is going to be a pretty good credit score. Actually, 750 to 850 is an excellent score. Um, really, when you get around less than 620, that would be something where it's going to be a little bit of a concern. You're probably going to get a little bit uh, higher interest rates associated with that. And actually, I have an example for you with that. Um, if an individual was going and getting a 60-month, $25,000 loan, they actually, if they had a, between a 720 and an 850 credit score, they could get around a 4.5% interest rate. For an individual that was coming in, going to purchase the same car, but actually had a credit score between 500 and 589, their percentage would be about 15.9%. So that's a huge difference in price as far as how much somebody's going to have to pay. And what's really interesting is their monthly payment is really going to differ. For somebody who had a lower interest rate, that 4.5%, they're actually looking at about a $466 payment versus the person who had a 15.9, they're looking at a $607 monthly payment. And that's not it. If you look at the interest that they're going to have to pay, it's, it's really a vast difference. For the individual at the 4.5%, it's actually $2,965 versus the higher interest rate can be over $11,000. So that's a huge amount that's really uh, facing individuals and really kind of goes to the importance of the difference in Right, so that scores. playing out multiple times over the course of a lifetime and you wonder why you're not getting ahead. Exactly. All right, so what types of in inquiries affect my credit score? That's a really good question. So there are two different main types of inquiries that we often look at. We can have hard inquiries, and those are inquiries that are essentially made by lenders who are you have sought out to request and look at your credit report. And so those might be um, anybody that you are accessing loans from, anybody okay. who you've requested credit. Okay. okay. And then there's also soft inquiries, and that could be as simply as you looking at your own credit report. Okay. And a soft inquiry is not going to uh, count against you. So it could be like employers that are looking at you to see All if right. you're a good employee. In yes. bullet point fashion, mm -hmm. what hurts my score and what helps it? Well, what hurts your score is really uh, uh, not paying down the debt that you have, having too much debt, um, actually going up to the maximum amount that you can have. 
And then what helps it is really paying your bills on time, being able to pay down that debt. And you know, you also want to really look at your credit report each year because if there Great. is derogatory information, that Great. can really hurt you. Great information. I bet we have some questions, Christy. Oh, great. <laughs> some questions, Mark, and I know that people are furiously taking notes here. This, this is fantastic information. Why don't you go ahead and tell us your name and what your question is? Um, my name is Maddie, um, and my question is, um, why is my credit score different for each credit reporting agency, and will this affect my likeliness of getting a loan? You know, that's a great question. I've always wondered that, because sometimes it's like a 50-point difference. Exactly. What's going on? Well, you know, one thing is that the way that credit scores are calculated are calculated a little bit different based on the lender that's actually looking for your particular credit score. So that's one of the factors. The other thing to really remember is that there are three different credit reporting agencies, so different information can get on those reports, which is why it's really important to look at each one of those different reports and make sure that they're accurate each year and not just trusting one particular report. So some report certain types of items, others don't. They calculate it or have a different algorithm. Exactly. So it's still so that's very good because it gives you some heterogeneity. In other words, they're different, so you get more information about yourself. You great guess. answer. Another great question, I bet. Another great question. Hi, what's your name? Go ahead and give us your question. Hi, my name is Robin. I'd like to know what is the best way to pay off my credit cards. Should I start with the ones with the lowest balance first, or the ones with the highest interest rate, or are there other things I should consider? That's interesting because often we can approach that two ways, emotionally as well as by the numbers. What do you say? You know, th there really is a lot of different approaches out there as far as paying off your credit card debt. And I think one of the things that we often advocate for and educate for is the snowball method. And really what you do with that is you can arrange your credit uh, by the highest interest rate and really start to pay off that highest interest rate card first because that's going to really reduce the amount that you're going to have to pay. The other interesting thing with that is you need to pay a consistent amount of money each month and you need to stop using your credit cards. A lot of people will start to pay off their credit cards but at the same point you know continue to use it and what happens is you can never get ahead with those credit card payments. Mm -hmm. What other follow-up to that? Were I applying for credit in a couple of years and I had two or three credit cards and two of which may have had higher interest rates on them but they were low. I was only carrying about 10 percent of my balance but I had another one that was at 60 or 70 percent of my balance. Mm -hmm. It would be better for me to get that one down to a ratio of maybe under 30 or so, which may have a material positive effect on my credit score. So that might be a third way to look at this if over the short term you may want to bump your credit score. Yeah, and, and I definitely think any time that you can start to pay off the credit cards or reduce that debt utilization ratio that you have on your credit cards is going to be a benefit. 35% of what is calculated in a credit score is actually your payment history, so paying your bills on time is really, really important, but 30% is really the amount borrowed. Uh, so you really want to make sure that that debt utilization ratio is as low as you possibly can. All right, great, great answer. Do we have another question, Chris? No, we don't. We're going to move on to our next segment All right, now. Let's All right. Okay, great. Thanks Thank so you. much.